Hi everyone, this is David Walt coming to you through your ortho coach. I'm going to be sharing a quick tip video about turbocharging your class 2 treatment, specifically combining aligners with a carrier motion appliance. This is just a preview of the webinar that I'm going to be hosting on Thursday, December 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll be introducing myself then as well, but I am looking forward to joining your ortho coach as the newest coach. So we're all familiar with the carrier motion appliance, a very common class 2 corrector. But I find that when we combine it with aligners, we're really optimizing the efficiency of the appliance. We've developed a protocol in our office where we treat our patients that are class two, oftentimes with a carrier motion appliance on the top with lower aligners. And we have this going on for about four to six months, after which we transition to upper and lower aligners for about six to nine months. From start to finish, the whole treatment takes about 12 to 15 months in total. Uh, which is a lot faster than I can do it with braces. In our office, uh, we use the carrier motion appliance for most cases that are a half step class two or more. And what we find is that in a period of four to six months, we get class one buckle segments, decreased overbite, decreased overjet with some upper spacing. Um, and then also the lower gets partially aligned during this process since we are using aligners. So this is what it normally looks like after four to six months. Again, bite is opened, less over jet, lower is partially aligned, and then the buckle segments are basically class one. We don't only use it for half steps. Uh, we go all the way to full step class twos, and we find predictably we get the patients into a class one platform with the bite opened, uh, the lower partially aligned with some upper spacing. This is obviously a much easier case to finish than a class two case. Here's an example of another case that we treated from start to finish in 14 months. For the rest of the video, I'm going to be talking about the debonding process, specifically when we transition from upper carrier motion appliance and lower aligners to upper and lower aligners. What I find is that the patient shows up at your office after some time and they're either class one or super class one. If they are class one, generally what we do is we advise them to continue wearing their aligners full time and then their elastics at nighttime and we plan for the debond at the next visit. If they show up and they're super class one, then generally what we tell them to do is to wear their aligners full time and then to stop elastic wear, planning for the debond at the next visit as well. In terms of specifics, like uh, number of aligners, the types of elastics, uh, we're going to go into a lot more detail about those systems in the webinar. There's basically two strategies that we utilize when we're ready to transition from upper motion appliance, lower aligners to upper and lower aligners. We either scan with the motion appliance on or the motion appliance off, and I'm going to go over both ways. So when we scan with the motion appliance on, make sure that there's visible tooth anatomy gingival to the bracket pad of the upper six. I'll show you a photo of what I mean. Um, we generally instruct the patients to continue wearing their elastics nighttime and then to also wear their aligners nighttime, about 10 to 12 hours a day. We then instruct the technicians on the ClinCheck to virtually remove the motion appliance and then to refer to the initial scan for the buccal anatomy of the upper threes and the upper sixes. So here's an example, um, a case that I started, and then after a couple months, we got them into a class one platform, slightly overcorrected, ready to transition to upper and lower aligners. That being said, this is a case that I would not recommend scanning with the motion appliance on because you can see there's really no visible anatomy of the tooth gingival to the bracket pad on the upper six. So let's contrast it with another case that I started. After a couple months, we got this patient into a class one platform, but you can see that there is quite a bit of tooth anatomy uh, gingival to the bracket pad on the upper six. So this is a case that if you wanted to scan with the motion appliance on, uh, I think that you would get a, a pretty predictable result when the upper aligners come back. However, in my office, I would say we generally scan with the motion appliance off. I find that this is more predictable and we get a more consistent fit when the aligners come back. It's booked with the hygienist in our office, just in Ontario regulation. The appointment is about 20 minutes. The process is that my hygienist takes photos, then debonds the appliance, and then scans for additional aligners. We treat debonding the carrier motion appliance basically like a ceramic bracket. We remove composite around the periphery of the appliance 
and then we use sushi plier or dull ligature cutters and we squeeze mesiodistal or incisal gingival, whatever's easier. Uh, leave the lower six button or bracket on, whatever you want to use. We'll go over some options in the webinar um, just because you might need it later. This is the appliance that we use to take off the carrier motion appliance. You can get it from American Orthodontics. And then what happens is that um, my hygienist then sends the scan to Invisalign for additional aligners. And then we also send the scan in-house uh, to our 3D printer, uh, of, off of which we 3D print a model, and then we make an upper holding Essex, so 030, so that's 0.75 millimeters. We then instruct the patient to wear the upper holding Essex and the lower aligner about 10 to 12 hours a day, and I don't get them to wear elastics during this transition. The next appointments that we book are an Essex pickup, not a delivery. We'll discuss that on the webinar as well the next day. And then we book an Invisalign bond about three to four weeks later. Again, we're gonna go into a lot more detail about this whole system on the webinar on Thursday, December 6th. I'm gonna share with you the agenda so you can see the topics that we're gonna be covering, um, how to set up the initial clin check when we have just lower only aligners, uh, what we do in our office to minimize the unwanted side effects. We'll also go over the clinical insertion and the bonding procedure along with the instructions that we give to the patients. Um, I'll go into a lot of detail about how we sequence our appointments and how we manage them appointment by appointment. Then we'll go in more detail about debonding and transitioning to additional aligners, which we covered uh, briefly today, and then how I set up the additional aligners clin check when we're doing the upper and lower aligners. So I look forward to speaking with you guys then and discussing this in more detail. Thank you.